Art of Relationship Show is copyrighted and no one is to use any portion of the show without express written consent from myself, Greg Dzinski, or the Art of Relationships. Thank you. Welcome to the Art of Relationship Show. Greg welcomes live calls from listeners in helping with numerous marital and relationship problems. There will be no more tit-for-tat arguments. Greg gets to the root of couples' challenges in a rapid, matter-of-fact format, plus applies compassion and humor. Join in discovering how to improve your relationship and your own life. Listen, laugh, and climax. Greg is a licensed professional counselor in the state of Michigan. To others, he's simply known as Detroit's love guru. <laughs> hey, welcome everybody. It is Friday. It's been one heck of a week a long week actually all my weeks are long but not bad it's good um hopefully i was able to help a lot of couples in my office this week and i want to help even more couples um out there in the world okay <coughs> yeah did you might have lost my arm look like a bird flapping around but <laughs> happy friday everybody um today we're going to talk about oral pleasure and it's one that people get a little squeamish they get maybe a little bit shy talking about you know oral pleasure and it sort of kicked off by a friend of mine oop, a long time uh, a friend of mine oops sorry I almost spilled my coffee <laughs> flapping my arms all over the place see I'm human so you look at um, kicked off a topic or you know messaged me on Facebook and stuff last uh, last night and was able to kick off about um, talking about oral pleasure. Do guys really like giving oral pleasures, okay? And it sort of led to uh, today's topic, absolutely. I said, what better day than a Friday, have fun, kick off the weekend, and we're gonna talk about oral pleasures, okay? So it was sort of ironic. Um, oh, <laughs> Godly Child just recognized the tissue in uh, the background in my office, a uh, little uh, Kleenex box, and uh, she asked if, uh, you know what, I do I have people crying in my office? Yes, I do. Um, probably there's not a day that goes by um, where there's not tears shed in my office. It depends, especially with the new, uh, new couple or new person that is going through, you know, a lot of uh, maybe heartfelt issues, heartbreaks, maybe lost a loved one, I, I do grief uh, counseling as well, and trauma. So there are, and also with couples, you know, one person finds out there's an affair and it gets to the root and it's devastating. So yeah, it gets very emotional um, at times in my office. So yes, uh, it is, uh, yes, there is tissue in the background as you see, okay? So that does happen. So. Um, Anyways, we're going to talk about oral pleasure, okay? And do you love it? Do you crave it? I'm one that freaking loves giving it. You know what? Am I a pro at it? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Every woman is different, right? And I'm like, teach me. Teach me what you want. Teach me how you like it, okay? Um, like I said, everybody's different. Do I like to receive oral pleasure? Hell to the yes, absolutely, okay? So we're going to get into oral pleasures. Do you like it? Do you hate it? Do you do it out of obligation? Which, you know what? I am not one to recommend anyone doing stuff out of obligation. I do not want to be with someone, even, you know, with sex or oral sex, okay? That's doing it just out of obligation. And you can tell that, you know what, when someone's doing it and they really are not into it versus they freaking love it, they crave it, they desire it. That's what I want and that's what I do when I give oral pleasure to my ladies, okay? Or I should say lady, I, you know, anyways. But looking at this aspect and the question that was posed to me by a friend of mine uh, last night through Messenger was, um, do guys really, do men really like giving oral pleasure? And you know what, I'm one guy. I can't speak for everybody else, but I can tell you that most guys I know, not all, most guys freaking love it, okay? They love policing their women. They love going, you know, down south, if you will, and sort of, you know what, mowing at the, at the Y, if you will, the old terminology, right? I love eating at the Y type of thing. And they love it. They love seeing their woman play, you know, please. They love to see him squirm and moan while they're giving oral pleasure. So most guys do like 
anything, right? There's some guys that won't, they refuse to do it, but it's sort of ironic. They command, right? They demand, if you will, their woman giving them oral sex and oral pleasure. And I'm like, that's hypocritical, right? That, that's so not right. <clears throat> well, it's just not me, Greg. And I said, you know, I'll ask the uh, you know, ladies in my office that, you know, really, you're okay with that. Why is that? Would you like him to do that? And I look at why, and I even touched it, you know, about oral pleasing in my book, The Relationship Guide, Tools to Ignite Love and Intimacy. And I talk about oral pleasure and different ways to maybe get away from the nuances or the insecurities about giving or receiving oral pleasure. But I would love to take a vote. You know what? Maybe, maybe we'll do that. I'll do a poll or maybe have a... Uh, Lexi uh, do a poll for me who helps uh, market and manage my uh, Facebook account <clears throat> and maybe have her do a poll. Hint, hint, Lexi. <laughs> um, you know, how many people like to give and how many people like to receive oral pleasure? And that would be ironic. I think most people love, love receiving it and I believe most people love getting it. Now I could be wrong, okay? And I'm not talking about all the time or whatever, but we could put that down as far as in a committed relationship, okay? In a committed relationship in a marriage, would that be it? Most people, if they're out there just um, playing around, you know what, looking for booty calls, that might be a different aspect because you got to be safe, you got to be careful, which I'm all about. <clears throat> and the question that was posed to me, um, you know, or we got into talking about oral uh you know oral pleasing last night with a friend of mine and she actually was a uh she's been a guest host on the show a few times too over the last couple of years <clears throat> but looking at the one person that came from that question you know do men really like it she said she did not you know like receiving it she loved giving it to her man but she don't like receiving it because she's self-conscious because of maybe what happens down there. Women have, you know, their menstrual cycle. Women um, might be conscious of maybe certain odors and all this stuff. <clears throat> and I get that. I understand that. But you know what? There's ways to combat that. There's ways, you know, of course it depends if you smoke, if you drink a lot. There's a lot of things that go into a woman's uh, pH balance that triggers certain odors, okay? Most men, you know, are okay with them. Most women don't have severe odor issues, <clears throat> but, and there's ways, like I said, com combat that. You talk about, you know, drinking a lot of water. There's, you know, drinking pineapple juice can help as well. <clears throat> Excuse me. And, you know, there's feminine products, but I also tell women when I was teaching uh, human sexuality classes and everything, that you, you know what, don't douche ladies because that will throw off your pH balance and make things worse. A lot of women don't know that, they don't recognize that, but it is not healthy for women to use, you know what, feminine douches, okay? It's not healthy, it can throw off your pH balance big time. So you need to be careful, you know, you can just, you know, use wipes, you know, feminine wipes or whatever for the exterior portion uh, maybe a little bit of the lips type aspect, but just warm, mild, soapy water can do wonders just for the outside. I don't want you to risk uh, bacterial infections or throw off your pH balance, um, you know what, for you as well, because I, I don't want problems for you. I'm all about, you know, you taking care of yourselves, men taking care of themselves. And also another way to get rid of odor, odor um, that you don't have it that much is to, you know what, trim <laughs> ladies to trim down there big time or even you know what some women wax some women shave completely down there i'm all for it okay i love bare floors down there <laughs> that's my own preference okay and if women don't trim or whatever it's the same thing with guys okay that you are able to look at you know what guys should take care of themselves trim up you know shave your junk too you know, everybody's different. Every woman's preference is different. Every guy's preference is different. But that can help eliminate odor big time too because the pubic hair can, you know, obtain and can gather um, the odor aspects as well. So, you know what? I'm all about getting rid of it. So, again, everybody is different. Um, Godly Child, hey, welcome. You mentioned natural remedies are the best. It's all about what your intake is as well. Absolutely. And that's one thing I mentioned you know, people that, you know, smoke a lot, that maybe drink a lot, and I like a few drinks myself, 
but it can be, um, you know what, it, it can cause problems. You know, a lot of fatty foods, that type of thing can cause, you know, odor issues as well. So again, you know, your diet, I recommend, you know, drinking pineapple juice for the lady, even guys, you know what, guys, you know, for pH, um, you know, balance and all this stuff for both men and women, you know what, pineapple juice and just, you know, a lot of water can help too. Um, Golly Chai wrote, trim each other. It can be fun. You know what? <laughs> I'd be afraid to cut you, man. <laughs> I'm like, uh, you know what? I'm careful and all this stuff. I take care of my own business. Um, you know what? But I'd be afraid to cut my lady. You know, <laughs> I'd be I'd be afraid all damn. And I know, you know, a lot of women prefer waxing down there, um, like the Brazilian waxes. And I'm like, oh, my God, I'm hurting thinking about it. And, you know, I know a lot of women might have problems you know, shaving, and it's not always that great to where you know, shave, and all of a sudden you have an ingrown hair on, you know what, your, you know, Libya major, you know what, the outside lip area, and, you know, <laughs> the you get an ingrown hair, and oh my God, freaking would hurt, I'm just thinking of it, and I don't have a vagina <laughs> at all, right, thank God, right, so there's different ways to be able to look at, you know, what works good for you, and going on, this situation um hello oop i thought uh someone was calling in but uh it was somebody else so looking at um the situation and the dynamic of you know what going back to do you like oral sex you know what do you like receiving oral sex and do you like getting oral sex um, all right, wait, receiving and getting are the same thing. Sorry, giving, there we go. It's Friday, it's been, like I said, a long week and I still have uh, the rest of today to go and uh, tomorrow, Saturday, seeing client, clients in my office as well. <clears throat> so, do you like receiving oral sex and do you like, you know what, giving oral sex? I'm all, I love both of it, right? I wanna please, I'm all about that. And using it as a part of foreplay and I tell guys all the time, to, you know what, always get their ladies off first, to make them orgasm first most of the time. You know what, it's, um, and what better way of doing it than to, you know what, give oral pleasure to your lady, okay? Now, going back to the issue, there are a lot of insecurities about it. It could be, like I mentioned at the beginning, um, women might be afraid of, you know what, their smells or what they taste like, right, down there. Yeah, I'm being blunt. You know what, this is real life, people. I, people that know me when I was teaching human sexuality classes and stuff, talking about this stuff <clears throat> in college courses, I'm, I'm very real, very real life, why not? A lot of people, you know, a lot of textbooks, a lot of, you know, people articles, they sort of water it down a little bit. Why not be real, why not be blunt uh, about the situation, okay? So you look at the dynamics of, um, you know, some women are self-conscious, I said odor, and taste, right? Usually, you know what, there is really not really any taste aspects, okay? You might taste a little salty type thing, but you know, there's really not that much taste involved and with, you know, with women, okay, big time. Now again, hygiene, pH levels, that will definitely play a role into it as far as odor and taste. So most guys, lady, love it. So I get, what would it help for you to be less, you know, self-conscious and be able to receive that pleasure to where you're not able to be, you know, grossed out or you think it's not gross. And it's ironic that there's a lot of women out there that might have this, you know, worry or concern. You know what, Greg, I don't want to receive it, but I love getting it. And I, I talk about why, you know what? And there's some issues we can talk about, um, you know, traumas with oral sex too, you know, as a child, maybe someone sexually abused you, um, either giving you oral, forcing you as a little kid to give the guy oral, that type of thing. <clears throat> and there, so I look at those aspects and it's not that easy as a cut and dry. And those could trigger a lot of traumas, you know, reoccurring the trauma, traumatic event, the uh, sexual abuse that took place as a kid or as a teen. So, you know, I look at all those issues and trying to address it. You know, are they triggered by traumas? Are they triggered by past um, sexual abuse situations? Or there might be situations where a guy, and I would, 
you know, punch a guy in the dick big time, or you know what, that a guy tries to force his lady to give him head, oral sex, and is very rough and almost freaking, you know, trying to push it through the back of her throat type of thing or back of her neck and is very, you know what, rough and disrespectful. And all of a sudden, that woman will no longer give someone, say they're out of that relationship, let's face it, they should be, right? And, you know what, all of a sudden, I'm not ever giving anyone oral pleasure again because of what happened to me. So there's a lot of stigmas and a lot of past experiences that can ruin oral sex for either gender, the male or the female. Maybe a guy loved getting oral sex and had oral sex one time and she bit accidentally. Oh my God. That was, you know what, in Austin, he's like so timid and afraid um, to ever have it done again. I get that, you know? <laughs> no teeth, no teeth. Or maybe a little nibbling type aspect, okay? But no biting, okay? So there's those type of aspects and I try to help get rid of the stigmas and heal you know, the past traumas where you can enjoy that. It's it's part of the sexual repertoire that, you know what, it's about pleasing the entire body in different ways as possible and trying to get rid of the stigmas and taboo surrounding oral sex. And, you know, there's some, you know, women that love to finish, you know, finish their guy as far as swallow, okay? Um, and some women, you know, they get into maybe it tastes like dirty socks, maybe it smells. It's the same thing, but it's being able to talk about it and some guys are okay with not finishing you know why they're given oral or they'll finish um you know their wife or girlfriend gives them oral sex right before they come and then they finish them off you know with uh you know with their hand that type of thing could be a way of doing it too so you know whatever works for you but i want you to be to the point where you're able to you know are you able to try it and enjoy you know what the sexual ooh, pleasures of oral sex about receiving it and you know what giving it and I would love to hear your questions and comments big time as far as um, you know what works for you do you love it do you hate it you know what is there do you have a preference do you love giving it and do you love receiving it I'd love to hear it join the discussion below okay below the live video you can join the discussion and also you can uh, give me a call, okay? I'd love to hear it. You will be anonymous. So give me a call, 313-736-5157. So as with, you know, everybody assumes that sex is so easy and it should be so natural. And just like oral sex, oh my God, just, you know, oral fixation. Oh my God, I love it, right? Um, but we look at the past traumas that were going on and we look at, you know, were you forced to give oral sex when you were younger? Like I said, as a kid, as part of the sexual abuse aspects and the trauma related to it and that's why you hate it is there a certain element maybe you grew up thinking oh my god you don't ever let somebody kiss you down there you know you have your mom or dad whatever oh that's gross don't ever have someone kiss you down there and it's like you know what maybe that's their bias you get me but because what we were told or suggested or whatever doesn't make it true, people, that's somebody else's bias, no matter if it's your, your mom, your grandmother, your dad, you know, grandfather, whoever raised you, okay, or maybe friend, that's disgusting, that's disgusting. It might be disgusting for one person, but that doesn't mean it's disgusting or has to be disgusting for you. You know what, like I said, I'm all over it. I love giving oral pleasure. And of course, I like receiving it too as part of a, you know, it could be as a floor foreplay repertoire. It could be just, you know, coming home and, oh my God, getting your pants, you know, just thrown down and just, you know, like a quickie type of thing, the passion, the animalistic, and, you know, just getting into, you know, the pleasures of it. And I talk to people and I, you know, promote a lot of uh, David, uh, you know, Snart's um, comment or philosophy, if you will, about, you know, being able to please your partner without you being pleased, being pleased without you worrying about your partner being pleased, and, you know, making love and effing, okay? I'll tone that down a little bit. You know, and the same thing applies to oral, you know, oral sex, too. Are you okay just pleasing your partner that way and without you worrying about you getting pleased, you know, or that you can be pleased without your partner being pleased. And a lot of um, 
people pleasers, a lot of people that love to give and they sort of feel guilty and shameful if they receive or they feel selfish, have a hard time with that aspect. And, you know, David Snarch talked about this in his book, uh, Sexual Crucible. Oh, my God, back, I'm trying to think, in the mid-80s, maybe? I want to I want to say mid, maybe it was later than that, maybe late 80s, early 90s. About, about having, you know, your relationship where you're able to do that, worried about, you know, being pleased. Um, you're able to please without worrying about your partner being pleased, making love and effing. The animalistic passion you have for each other mixed with the emotional eye-to-eye -eye contact, it's all of that, throw it into one. And you can have that, um, you know, with oral pleasure as well, okay, big time. And also, how many people, you know, this is a thing, too, I run into all the time, too, when you're giving oral pleasure. Oh, my God, I love getting oral pleasure. Uh, I love when she gives me oral pleasure. I love when he gives me oral pleasure. And this comes from, you know, people I know, from clients and everything else, that, you know what, but, oh, my God, I love it, but don't look at me. <laughs> don't look at me while you're doing it. How many people love getting oral pleasure and being able to look at their partner, right? And how many people feel subconscious that, you know what, while I'm giving oral pleasure, you know what, that, you know, don't look at me, don't look at me. They feel self-conscious about that. You know what, oral pleasure cannot be, it can be soulful, absolutely can be pl pleasurable, can be soulful, can be meaning, can be passionate, right? It, it's not just about the sex act. It can be, you know, ever once, so while, once in a while, it can be fun, it can be great. Oh my God, that was phenomenal, okay? But, um... It can be great, but it also can be loving. It can be soulful. It's awesome when your partner freaking just craves to please you in that manner. And there's some people, like I said, the eye-to-eye -eye contact while they're doing it can make it even more hot, more stimulating, more sensual while it's going on, okay? So think about, you know, what your taboos are surrounding oral sex. Do you love it? Do you hate it? You know, is there one thing, would you rather give it than receive it type of thing, okay? And I'll get, you know, have Lexi to, you know, do a poll on this on my, uh, both my public figure page. I had a brain fart, sorry. My public figure page, you know, facebook.com slash Detroit's Love Guru, which I'm doing the show from. And also, uh, I'll throw it out on my um, regular, uh, whatever you want to call it personal page if that's what you call it so I'll get a poll out there I'd love to hear about this but there might be a lot of people that might not um, want to reveal because it's private it's intimate right a lot of people feel you know what that oral pleasure oral sex is a lot more intimate even than regular sex that you know penis vagina or whatever um, sexual encounters that oral sex is a lot more intimate and that's what I meant about going back into the eye contact while you're having oral sex and not or like anything else like regular sex you know oral sex you know you have to train each other what you like how you like it and that goes from you know the the pre the pressure that you apply right or the suction power that you use if you're giving a guy oral or the guy can also you know use suction power too and sort of suck on the lips genital regions the clit, clit aspects as well you know what do you like do you like a little flickering do you like a little teasing do you like light pressure do you like firm pressure and it all depends on your level of arousal and I tell guys all the time okay a lot of people guys that give oral pleasure to their lady they're, they're going right after the clit okay and I tell guys don't freaking do that because it can be very painful if the woman is not turned on enough right if their juices aren't flowing if the clit is not engorged um, erect you get me? So it can be very, very painful. So there's ways you can tease it, guys, right, to get her prime. Why don't you kiss her a little bit or, you know what, just caress her all over and let her warm up and get, you know what, erect in her genital regions before. A lot of people just go down and go right after the clit, and it can be very painful for the ladies, right? So tease it a little bit, you know, the lips, kiss around the legs, you know, kiss the mouth, you know kiss french kiss be passionate you know work your way down and build up the anticipation and teasing and make sure she is a wreck don't go just after the clit without her being turned on because it can be very very painful okay 
Um, oh, we got someone. I'm 44 and starting to lose interest. You know what? This I want to know. I would love to uh, to know why you lose interest. I am around your age, and I, hell no, don't ever lose interest. So I'd love to know why you lose interest. If you feel like it is um, your partner is selfish, so I get that, that they're always about them receiving oral sex, but they're not willing to, you know, perform oral sex on you and give you oral pleasure. So I get people losing interest that way because their lover is being selfish and it's all about them, but they don't want to, they don't want to give back. They don't want to, me, I'm all about freaking, I love it. So, and I don't ever see myself ever, um, how can I say this, losing interest, but everybody's different. And this is a great question that, you know, what I would ask, do you lose interest in oral sex or do you lose interest in sex altogether? Okay. Um, all hormones. That, that's, you know, I, I, that is a good topic. So, you know, I, that's why I asked, you know, is it that you lose interest in, you know, oral sex or are you losing interest in sex altogether? And it could be because of hormone issues. You know, women, unfortunately, the change of life that might be going through menopause, that might, you know, had a full hysterectomy where their ovaries are taken out as well as their uterus, that the hormone challenges, they, you know what, they go down there. They don't produce the hormones anymore. Very, very, you know, in small, small doses. So their sex drive changes, okay? And not only that, when they're going through menopause, a lot of women, they don't produce um, fluid, right? They don't, you know, with lubrication, they don't produce the natural lubrication um, through their, you know, skein's gland. And, you know, I can get into all the biological aspects of skein's glands, the urethra sponge and all this involved. But women, when they go through the change, they don't produce the natural lubrication. So that can be very painful, sex in general. And you know what, even oral sex can be, you know, maybe not that pleasurable unless there's lubrication. So that's where, you know, the natural, you know, water-based lubrication can come into play. There's, you know, I always tell people 100% grapeseed oil. You can use coconut oil 100%. Um, so, you know, there's other things that you can use. I tell people don't you know, water-based, you know, lubricants you can use, but sometimes, you know, they might have sugar in them, and that's not healthy for the women's vaginal area as well. So you got to be careful. Like I said at the beginning, I'm all about protecting and self-care for the ladies. Well, guys too, okay? So I don't want any, sometimes to put fructose sugar in, you know, the edible syrups and lubrication, that type thing for sex, and they're not all that healthy after all, okay? Um going through perimenopause, it's been real. Oh, no, I'm sorry that you're going through that. And like I said, there's, um, you know, I get that. The hormones flip out so they can kill your desire. They can kill your interest just on the hormone aspects. And there's something else that can help. And I tell, you know, women all the time and I pronounce, you know, would per not prescribe it. I don't prescribe meds, but I would recommend. There we go. Even when I was teaching uh, human sexuality classes, if you know older women were going through menopause or their mothers, grandmothers type thing, there's one thing, and I always I'm going to disclose this. I want you to be able to talk to your doctor, your OB, your gynecologist about this, okay? But there's some things that can help with the night sweats, um, the cold chills, and all this while you're going through it is black cohosh. And it's black and it's spelled C-O-H-O-S, okay? It's a natural ingredient. It's been around for a long time and it helps my experience. I can't, I'm only speaking for me and the women I know that use it. it it's helpful for about 80, 85% of the women. And for the cold sweats and, uh, you know, heat, heat flashes and all that stuff, uh, some women might use black cohesh or some that actually an SSRI like Celexa that can also, a mild, mild dose of it, like 10 milligrams, can also, yeah, I know it's an antidepressant, but it also can help with the sleep patterns and the heat flashes and, you know, the cold sweats and all this stuff that women go through with menopause. That um, So that is a recommendation 
that I tell women that you can use if it's that severe, okay? I'm glad I'm not a woman and I, you know what, I, I, my heart goes out to women that, you know, are going through menopause and that battle with these issues, okay? It's, you know what, it's natural, but unfortunately it sucks for women, okay? Guys, we have it easy, let's face it, and I don't ever take that for granted either. So trying to, if you have a partner that's going through menopause, you know, you see suggestions. Talk to, have her talk to, you know, her doctor, her OB about black cohosh and about even, you know, a mild dose of Celexa can help, would be my recommendation, that can help with the, you know, the night sweats and, uh, you know, the f heat flashes, code flashes, all those aspects, okay? Oh, yeah, the insomnia and mood swings, oh, my God. And that's what I'm talking about. So I'm all about trying to help those situations. And, you know, the night sweats, you know, freaking, you know, if you have a partner, you know, going through this, you know, he's freezing his butt off and you have the AC cranked up where it's 32 degrees in the house and you're still sweating and he's freezing his butt off. It's so not pleasurable for you ladies out there that are going through menopause. And I, you know, my heart goes out to you. So uh, going back to the oral pleasure, look at, you know, what your taboos are. Do you love it? Do you hate it? Are there different things that you can change it up about it? You know, do you like all your genitals, you know, be part of the oral pleasure scene, if you will, or experience? And are you able to, you know what? crave it, to go after it, not do it out of obligation, or same thing with obligation, how many people really don't like receiving it, but okay, I'm going to let him do that, or let her do that, don't freaking do that, that's, you know what, that's not a turn on, that's a turn off, right, and if your partner loves to do it, why don't you freaking go after it, and enjoy it, and lay back, and freaking, you know what, have at it, and enjoy or a pleasure, because it can enhance your sex life, oh my god, so very, very much if you both are on the same page, okay? So talk to each other about it, what you like, what you don't like. Maybe you want, you know, the testicles licked more. Maybe you want the perineum, you know, licked or the lower level of the vaginal region maybe, you know, licked and sucked on a little bit. Everybody's different, okay? So experiment, talk about it, and you know what? Enjoy it, okay? Everybody, you know what? Have a great weekend. Check out my website, theartofrelationships.com. And as always, you can catch me here live Monday through Friday, 12 noon Eastern time with the Art of Relationships show. Everybody take care. And you know what? My love and peace to everybody out there. Thank you for all the support and tuning in.